TV KPM. Loving knowledge and wanting to achieve excellence in SPM. I believe those are your motivations and you have done the right choice because now you are watching Success SPM 2022 Pachutan on DD8 TV KPM. Hello everyone, my name is Hanif Sean and today we are very lucky because we have a teacher with 20 years of experience teaching to share a lot of knowledge on English, which is what we're going to learn together today. Without further ado, let's take a look at his profile. Yes, you have seen his profile. We have Mr. Mohana with us today. Hello, Mr. Mohana. Hi, Hanif. How are you? I'm doing good. And how are you today? I'm good as well. I'm sure you're all excited. There's a lot for you to share with our pupils at home. But of course, Mr. Mohana, we also have our sign language interpreter with us today, which is Teacher Aida. Hello, Teacher Aida. How are you doing, Teacher Aida? Oh, I can see the enthusiasm in her that she's also excited to learn English together with us today. Right, Mr. Mohana, so share us a bit what are we going to learn in our English uh, lesson today? Okay, Hanif, uh, for today's lesson, we are going to look at SPM Writing Paper 2. Uh, writing Paper 2, and in Writing Paper 2, we have three parts. We are going to look at Part 1, Short Communicative Message, Part 2, Guided Writing, and Part 3, Extended Writing. Oh, wow, that sounds like a lot that we're going to learn together today. I think I'm, I'm excited to start our lesson right yeah. now. Shall we start? Sure, let's okay. do it. All right, so if you see here, uh, for today's lesson, uh, what we are going to look at first, we are going to look at the format, okay? The format in the SPM English Language Paper 2, okay? Uh, in the SPM English Language Paper 2, we have three parts here. Uh, part 1, we have short communicative message. Part 2, we have guided writing. And part 3, we have extended writing. So if you see, uh, for part 1, uh, the number of words uh, required uh, is about 80 words. And for guided writing, we have about 125 to 150 words. And for part three, the extended writing, we have about 200 to 250 words. So uh, the number of words here are, are according to the level. So if you see here, we have one side. I've already listed the level. Uh, for part one, uh, the level of the essay required is at A2 level. Uh, part two, we have guided writing at B1. And part three, we have B2. And the most important thing, another thing that students need to take into consideration duration is the time given. Uh, time given for part one is 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, part two, 25 to 30 minutes, and part three, 35 to 40 minutes. Altogether, for writing component paper two, students will have about one hour, 30 minutes. Right? Okay, so how about the score? So if you see part one, part two, and part three, all three, we have the same score, 20 marks. Okay, and yeah, some important points that need to be taken here. Uh, part one and part two are compulsory tasks. Students have to answer part one and part two. It's a must. And part three, there will be three questions. And from the three questions, students would pick one question to answer. Okay, uh, so far, I have already uh, explained on the format very gener uh, in general. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the words, a lot of times students ask me, can we write more than the required word? For example, for part one, uh, the number of words given are only 80. That, that's the word limit given. But uh, yes, uh, if students uh, want to write more than 80 words, uh, that is, there is no problem in writing more than 80 words. But the issue here is the time. Okay, the time. And uh, in, uh, here, we are not looking at the length of the essay to give the scores. The scores are given according to the quality of the essay, right? Now, let us look at how the scoring is done. So the scoring for the SPM English Language Paper 2 is, uh, is done for, uh, in four components. Yeah? There are four components. The first one, we have the content. The second one, we have the communicative achievement and organization. And finally, we have the language. So each of these components, the score awarded is five. So uh, I have already simplified here, if you see in the form of question, I have simplified how the scores are given. For example, the, for part one, 
if you see uh, the question that I've put here, did, did you respond to all the tasks? Uh, and then did you answer all the questions asked in the task? So these are some very general questions that students can use it as a check, okay, to check whether they have fulfilled all the criteria that is required for them to answer the FPM writing paper. Right. I think those are very exciting and important notes that we need to really uh, put in our mind and pay attention to when we're writing this. I do have one question, Mr. Mohana. Yes. When you mentioned, for example, part one, where it's about 80 words, and you're, they are not advised to go more than 80 words, content is very key here. Uh, yeah. is, that number of min is there a minimum number of words, though? Okay, uh, so we, we do not actually have a minimum number of words. The minimum num maximum number of words is 80 here. Yeah? Uh, students can actually write more than 80 words, doesn't matter. So, but if, uh, we, we uh, do not want them to write too many words. So if it's 80 words, they can write up to 100 words. Why up to 100 words? That is the number of words that they can handle within the 15 to 20 minutes. Same goes to part two and part three. And we do not want them to write uh, so much because we do not want them to write unnecessary details in the, uh, in the essay. That is one way to help them as well. Yeah. Right. I fully agree with you, Mr. Mohana. As you said, quality of the writing is very important. Hence, quality would translate to content. Yes. And remember, content is king. That's very important for us to always pay attention to. And we're going to take a short break right now. There's a lot more that Mr. Mohana will be sharing with us. So do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on Success SPM 2022 Pachutan on Didik TV KPM. Didik TV KPM. Didik TV KPM. Hello everyone, you are now watching Success SPM 2022 Pachutan on d -Date TV KPM. The subject that we are learning today is English, putting focus on paper 2 which is writing. With me is Mr Mohana to share with us a lot more on this. And in this segment, we'll be putting more focus on short communicative message. Right Mr Mohana? Yes Hanif. Okay, so we are going to look at short communicative message, yeah Hanif? So before we start, okay, these are a few things that you need to remember when uh, students need to remember when they write short communicative message. This is kind of the way, uh, a way for uh, pupils to organize their task. Okay, when it's a short communicative message, it could be uh, an email that you are respond, writing to your friend uh, in a very informal way. So that is why we call it a short communicative message. Okay, uh, so if you see, we have uh, several things that we need to uh, keep in mind here. First, you need to start the message with a greeting by just uh, with a simple hi or hello. Then you have the opening paragraph responding to the opening idea of the sender and make clear of the purpose of your email. So this is how you, do, you start your opening paragraph. And then it moves on to the body paragraph where we have to respond to all the points given in the email or letter. And then finally, we have the closing paragraph where you end your email appropriately and you may use appropriate ending phrases. Now, other aspects that students can take into consideration when uh, writing a short communicative message is the use of cohesive devices, tenses and vocabulary. Uh, a very simple tenses and vocabulary and students do not really need to go and look for vocabulary in a very specific vocabulary book, yeah, Hanif? Actually, there are a lot of interesting vocabulary that the stu uh, students can actually find in their textbooks itself. So the vocabulary, the, the vocabulary section in the text book will be very helpful in finding ideas to use for the short communicative message. So if students are using this structure here, starting with greeting, opening paragraph, body paragraph, and then closing paragraph, so they will never go wrong. So the our, our organization of the idea will be there. So now let us look at a task, an example of a task. Okay, so if you see the task here says, uh, you received an email from a friend, uh, Sasha, who wants your opinion on something. Hello, Ida. My science teacher is retiring soon. My class and I wish to give him a farewell party. Where should we do it? Who should we invite? What can we give him as a gift? I'll be waiting for your reply. Bye. Love, Sasha. So this is an email that you have received, uh, uh, Ida has received from Sasha. Okay, so you are supposed to write an email to your friend in about 80 words. Okay, so uh, if you see here, the task here, uh, I have highlighted the three most important questions here. So we have where should we do it, who should we invite, 
and what can we give him as a gift? Now, students have uh, pupils have to answer these three questions, yeah, Hanif. These three questions, right. uh, in order to gain the content marks. Okay, that's why I have highlighted these are the three most important questions. Now, when pupils get this the question for a short communicative message, they should focus on the three questions that is given. And it doesn't mean that you can con uh, uh, conveniently ignore the opening phrase in the email. One way to respond to the email is by uh, telling something about Ida, uh, Sasha's idea of having a retiring party for the teacher. How would you like to respond? Like you can say, it's a great thing for you to do a retirement party for your, a farewell party for your teacher. That is how you respond. Now, let us look at an example for one of the questions. So if you see, there are three questions here. Where should we do it? Who should we invite? What can we give him as a gift? So now I'm going to just show one example from one of these questions. Okay, so where should we do it? Okay, with a reason. So Hanif, would you like to read this part? Sure. So the question, as you said, Mr. Mohana, is where should we do it? And uh, the suggested answer would be, in my opinion, you should organize the farewell party at the school canteen because you can save a great deal of money to buy him a special gift. All right, well done, Hanif. I wish you were my student. Okay, you read it really <laughs> well. Okay, so this is one example yeah, of a response. Where should we do it now? Uh, and ex ex uh, extra information that you can add here is by providing a reason. You want to suggest a place, a hotel or a school canteen. Why would you suggest such a place? So you give a reason. And how lengthy that reason could be, you can just give one or two reasons is enough because it's just an 80 to 100 word task, right? So this is an, a, a complete answer, yeah? an example of an email, a complete answer response uh, from Ida to Sasha. So uh, any question, Hanif? I, th I think this is actually very interesting and those are very important points that we need uh, to take a look and pay attention to, Mr. Mohana. I do wonder, are there other key ideas or thoughts that we should actually uh, make sure that we remember when we're actually crafting this answer. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Ani, for the question. So, there are a few things that students need to take into consideration, yeah? Uh, uh, some things to remember, yeah? Uh, check for spelling errors. Okay, uh, this is not only for part one, yeah, for part two, part, and also for part three. So I'm saying it in very general here. Uh, do not repeat the same words or phrases. Try to use a variety of phrases. Okay, and then check whether you have answered all questions before moving on to the next. But this is one important thing. So once you have uh, written your answers, okay, or once you have drafted out, make sure you check. Uh, whether you have responded to the email appropriately, have you answered all the three questions? Read again and again to check whether you have answered because the content points are very important. Next, this is a short communicative message. Yeah? So sh keep it short. You do not need to write an, a lengthy informal letter. The, the task itself says short communicative message. So how well you communicate your message in a very short way, that is how you respond here. So. Uh, if you write too, uh, a very lengthy answer, then you might have a lot of unnecessary information which will affect pupils' uh, communicative achievement at the end of the day. Mm, All right? Think, yeah. Yes, Mr. Wana, I find it very interesting. And looking back at the sample answer that was given, as you said, to not disregard um, the first, the introductory sentence from the question. The yes. question, uh, the email from Sasha was, my science teacher is retiring soon. My class and I wish to give him a farewell party. And yes. how uh, it is provided in the sample answer, which says organizing a farewell party for your science teacher is a great idea. I'm delighted that you're asking ideas from me, which is, as you say, in our response, we should not disregard the subject yes. or the idea. Exactly, yeah. Right. So this is actually, you are pointing out the main idea, what you're going to say, so that this, uh, you are actually responding. Like It's just like when somebody asks you, how are you? Uh, and you are saying, uh, answering, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm really good. So this is exactly the same way you are responding to the task. So each, uh, and this is one way to help students to gain more scores at the communicative achievement section as well. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so remember, not uh, student, uh, pupils not only supposed to focus on the three main content points, but also other ideas given should be able to connect the entire idea to all the three content points. Yeah. I see. I, I agree with you on that. And I like how uh, Ida ends her letter here, which is your friend Ida. And <laughs> yeah. Sasha ends her letter with love, Sasha. Yeah. So, uh, pupils are also allowed to have their 
input their sense of creativity then. Yes, yes. Because this right. is an, a, an informal, uh, short communicative message. Yeah, they, they can add these details here. Yeah. I see. Okay, I think that, that's, that clarifies a lot of things. And I find it very exciting. And now we're going to take a short break. I, it's, I believe all of you are very much... Uh, you have a greater understanding now on how to write an, an answer for part one. And I'm sure you'd like to know more on the other parts. Mr. Mohana has a lot to share with you. We're going to take a short break right now. Do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on d TV KPM. d TV KPM. d TV KPM. Success can be achieved when you do the right things and you do the right things continuously. And now you are watching Success SPM 2022 Pachutan on Didate TV KPM. Together we are learning English, putting focus on paper two, which is writing. And with me is Mr. Mohana, who has 20 years of experience teaching. And Mr. Mohana, for this yes. segment, I believe we'll be putting a greater focus on directed writing. Yeah, uh, guided writing. Guided writing, yeah. my apologies. <laughs> Okay, so we are, we are going to look at guided writing part two yeah, for English SPM, English paper two. So right. for guided writing, the first thing, uh, what, is uh, what are the pupils required to do for guided, write, uh, guided writing here? First, candidates are to write an essay in about 125 to 150 words based on the stimulus given. Uh, the stimulus may contain three related prompts that pupils must use. And can, candidates, as I said, must use all the prompts appropriately while writing the essay. And candidates should provide reasons and give their own point of view where needed. So these are the, some of the uh, criteria that the uh, pupils need to fulfill when they write the task for guided writing. Now let us look at an, uh, uh, some parts here for the component part, uh, the gr uh, scoring part. Uh, as I, sh I have shared this earlier, but I have added uh, a, a few more words here for the guided writing part. So if you see, uh, the guided writing as well will be uh, scored, uh, students will be, uh, pupils will be given scores based on their content, communicative achievement, organization and language. Now in the content part, the score of five marks, how it is given, whether the task has been full, completely fulfilled, all the question, whether has all the question been answered. Okay, so has the ad, uh, essay addressed all the content points given in the stimulus? So this is very important here for the content. As long as people answer the questions given correctly, appropriately, the content mark, five marks, full marks will be given. Okay, second, communicative achievement. Is the writing appropriate for the task? Very easy. How to achieve communicative achievement? Can the essay uh, uh, get the reader's attention? A reader's attention. When I, I'm reading an essay, am I interested to read more in this essay? Do I like this essay? So that is what I mean here by can the essay hold reader's attention? So as, uh, if you write in a very interesting way that can connect the reader to the essay, that's when people will connect, uh, able to achieve the communicative achievement. And then moving on to the organization. Are the contents of the essays organized or arranged in a logical manner? So whichever needs to come First must come first, and then whichever needs to go next should go next. And here, we need to use linkers. Now, uh, Hanif, do you know why we need to use linkers for organising an essay? I guess linkers would allow the sentences to have a better flow. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yes, it would allow uh, sentences to have a better flow. And at the same time, it also uh, helps the readers to know where the writers are going next. For example, if you start with a, uh, the sec a paragraph with one of the advantages, meaning to say you are saying that you are going to list the advantages in that particular paragraph. Or in the next paragraph, you say on the other hand. Or in contrast, meaning to say you are going to give a contrasting detail of an issue that is being uh, discussed in the essay. So that is why cohesive devices are very important, which is to organize a uh, pupil's essay and to create a direction for the reader where you are heading next. That is why we use cohesive devices. Therefore, when pupils are using cohesive devices to organize their essays, pupils should know what type of linkers and connectors that they should use so that they are addressing the idea correctly. Right? And language, what about language? So for language part, the, uh, the thing that you need to keep in mind is the vocabulary and as well as the grammar, the correct grammar tenses. 
Okay, and spelling comes here as well. So that is uh, that is the uh, language part that pupils need to focus. Now let us look at an example of a question for part two. Okay, so this is a question here. Your class has been discussing the uses of the internet for pupils, and your teacher has asked you to write an essay about it. In your essay, you should write about what you mainly use the internet for, the benefits you get from using the internet, and when you usually use the internet. Use all the notes above and give reasons for your point of view. Now, the first thing when pupils get this kind of question, guided writing, okay, the first thing that you need to look for is the keyword. What is the keyword in this stuff? If you see, the internet is the keyword. Okay, the internet is the keyword. And uh, okay, then what are the key ideas that pupils need to focus on? Okay, so if you see the first one, what you mainly use the internet for, okay, the use of the internet that you need to focus here. Then the second one is the benefits you get from using the internet. This is the keyword for benefits. And when you usually use the internet, okay, meaning to say uh, the general use, when you usually use the internet. So these are the keywords. Okay, or the key ideas. So first keyword that I have identified here is the word internet. Then the key ideas that need to be shown in the essay would be the uh, why when you mainly use the use of internet, the benefits one gains from the internet, and how you usually use the internet. Now, keep in mind when these are the questions, focus on this part of the questions alone. Do not bring a lot of other elements into the uh, question. Now, just to make, make sure pupils understand what I'm trying to say here, let us just look at one example, yeah, Hanif? Sure. Okay, so let us look at this. The benefits you get from using the internet. And yeah, one more thing that I forget to remind you is the benefits you get. So meaning to say you need to use first person pronoun here. Okay, you're talking about your own experience. So that is another important thing that pupils need to remember. Now, so here we have the benefits you get from using the internet. Now, let us look at the example. I gain countless benefits from the internet. Okay, so when I highlighted this word here, if you see this sentence, the first sentence here, I've highlighted here, it shows that uh, this is the starter. Okay, this is the starter, which I took actually from the question. This is what pupils can do. Okay, the question says the benefits you get from using the internet. You make that as your first sentence of your paragraph. Okay, benefits from the internet. So that would make things easier. So you do not need to beat around the bushes to start the paragraph. Uh, people may be wondering, what are you trying to say when you write too lengthy uh, introduction in the par paragraph introduction, you see? So the first sentence to show what you're going to explain here. Now, first and foremost, using the internet to help with my homework saves me so much time. Doing research is faster this way. The answers are only a tap away. Moreover, I don't have to spend hours searching for facts or answers in physical books. Okay, so you have the idea, you have uh, talked about the benefits you get from the uh, using the internet. So this is how you organize your idea. So I have put in the cohesive devices as well to show that I'm bringing in extra details to, uh, to explain what I have uh, stated earlier. Now, let us look at one complete answer. Okay, this is one complete answer where I have an, uh, addressed the, all the three questions given in the task. Okay, and this essay, if you see, is written in five paragraphs. Yeah, the first paragraph is uh, the, is the introduction. Second paragraph, okay, uh, I use internet for uh, what do I use internet for? Second one uh, is about the benefits, and the third one is uh, how uh, when do you usually surf the internet? And the last one is the conclusion. So I've written it in five paragraphs. Okay. But pupils can write it in four paragraphs as well, meaning to say the third and the fourth paragraph you can combine together. Minimum four paragraphs will do. Some pupils, they, write, uh, they combine all the three body paragraphs together, write it in three paragraphs. That is okay as well. Now, Hanif, would you like to read the paragraph for me? Sure, I would love to. Right, the sample answer, it says, the internet is an inv invaluable tool for most of us. It has made accessing information and communicating with people both faster and more convenient. For me, the internet is vital. I use it mainly to complete my homework. Moreover, there is so much information available on educational websites that I can find all the information I need to complete my assignments. Furthermore, I gain countless benefits from the internet. Using the internet to help in my homework saves me so much time. 
doing research is faster this way, the answers are only a tap away. So I don't have to spend hours searching for facts or answers in physical books. I mostly surf the internet after school hours while doing my homework. I do avoid viewing inane content then to not waste my precious time. In conclusion, the internet is a boon to me. It aids me in completing my assignments, homework, and in obtaining information with less hassle. Bravo. I love, well I love done, the conclusion Thank there. you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the conclusion there, Mr. Mahana. Okay. All yeah. right. So that's uh, very good. Okay. Very well done. Thank you, honey, for reading the sample essay for me. So this is an example of a sample essay that pupils can write. Okay. Uh, to, to, uh, and if you see here, it is organized. And, uh, I've put the three paragraphs here. Normally, I would ask my students to write in three paragraphs so that they know that they are uh, addressing three different questions to make things clearer. Okay, so it's up to the students whether you want to write three paragraphs like this or you want to make uh, a four paragraphs or you just want to make three paragraphs with introduction, body and conclusion. Right? right. Mr. Mohana, I do have a question because at one point you mentioned that language and vocabulary is yes. also important here. I guess words like invaluable tool in the first line it says there, we could also use alternative words like it's a very advantageous tool, it's mm -hmm. a very precious tool, yeah. it's a very useful tool for yes. me. Okay, right. yes. Uh, so if you see here, uh, thanks for pointing this out here, Hanif. So if you see, uh, how, do, how do we use different types of vocabulary? How do we learn to use different types of vocabulary? First of all, pupils should read different types of essays. Okay, so here, you see here, I have a few ways, okay, how to improve your writing skills. First get plenty of writing practices at home and at school. Not writing alone. At the same time, you need to read sample essays. Try to read, understand. Don't just memorize. Try to read, understand these sample essays, and then try writing, uh, writing practices. And then practice using appropriate cohesive devices and linking words in your essay. And at the same time, when you are practicing writing, try to uh, get new vocabulary, try to look for new vocabulary, and use those vocabulary in your essay. As I said here, one way is studying sample essays, at least one essay a day. Understand the structure of the essay. Understanding the structure of the essay is more important, right? And the last thing is, pupils should identify their, uh, their strengths and weaknesses so that they would be able to know uh, where to go in the, uh, when they're writing the essay. A lot of times, pupils are just blindly practicing their writing skills. So you shouldn't do that. You first need to understand what is lacking in, their, in your essay. So, for, uh, so you need to study. Uh, why pupils cannot use different types of vocabulary? It's very uh, it is very easy. Uh, let me just explain to you in an analogy, right? Uh, our brain is like ATM machine. No, you, you know you have an ATM machine, yes. you insert an, a, a card in ATM machine, you press the pin number, and when there is money, the money will come out. But if there's no money in the ATM machine, nothing will come out, right? Exactly what happens when you do writing. You need to first store all the vocabulary, creative phrases, ideas in your brain. Only then when you write, these ideas will flow as your creative juices. If you don't store any idea in our brain, nothing will, not, 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 nothing will be able to be conveyed in the essay at the end of the day. So that is why it is very important for pupils to study. So when you read, okay, when you read sample essays very seriously, what happens is you tend to absorb the ideas. And these absorbed ideas are the ones that later on will be shown in your essay. So this is one way. So as SPM is nearing very, uh, very close to, uh, to the students now, so at least for now, what pupils can do is they can practice reading, very seriously reading one essay a day. Right. I think that's a very good advice, Mr. Mohana, because i be honest with you, in my own experience, I do read a lot of novels since I was young. So that really helped me to enrich my vocabulary. Things like when I, went to, when I want to use the word important, sometimes I would change it with vital, I would change it with crucial or even imperative. Yeah, if I want to use a wide range, it could be a wide spectrum. Yeah, so I fully agree with what Mr. Mohana said. Do a lot of reading and that will definitely help you. So we're going to take a short break. I think that was a very enriching experience and a good analogy that Mr. Mohana gave. Our brain is like an ATM machine. Feed it with knowledge and it's easier for you to channel it later. We're going to take a short break. Stay tuned with us on Success SPM 2022 Pachutan on Didate TV KPM. Didate TV KPM
Ide TV KPM. Hello everyone, you are now watching Success SPM 2022 Pecutan on Didate TV KPM and the subject that we are learning is English and together we want to enhance our writing skills which is why Mr Mohana will share a lot of good guidance with us today and Mr Mohana, in this segment we are going to put focus on extended writing Yes. Ah, it seems to be like the longest essay in the paper here. Yes, yes, uh, Hanif. Uh, part 3, Extended Writing. Uh, pupils are required to write about three, uh, 200 to 250 words. Okay, and this is also the longest task here. Uh, if you see, in 1 hour 30 minutes, this part, uh, pupils can actually spend about 40 to 45 minutes to complete the task. Okay, and this is also one of the difficult part uh, in the paper for part, uh, the part three extended writing because it is tested at a higher level. Okay, so this part contains three tasks. And for the, uh, unlike part one and part two, uh, they are compulsory tasks. Part three, pupils, uh, there are three tasks and pupils ca uh, can choose uh, one out of the three. Okay, and the writing styles and conventions need to adhere to the requirement uh, of the task that the candidates choose. Now, for example, if you see here, uh, the options given in part three are report, review, story, and article. So there are four different formats here. Out of these four formats, three will be tested in SPM. And out of these three, pupils can choose one to respond, right? Okay. So if you see here, uh, before we move on to the uh, to the third part, okay, uh, to the extended writing, just let me continue with a little bit on how to improve writing for this part particularly for extended writing part. For the extended writing part, it's very important for pupils to be able to differentiate all the four part uh, four formats: report, article, uh, review, and also narrative. Because the four formats here. There are, there are different writing styles that pupils need to understand. For example, writing a review, it has a specific style. Writing a narrative, there are a lot of different elements that need, you need to include. And then writing an article comes with a separate set of format as well. So pupils need to understand how to go about all these three formats before they pursue on writing this essay. So uh, in the textbooks, there are a lot of samples given, there's a lot of guidance given. So what I'm going to share here to Today are just a little bit of inputs on how to further improve the essay writing skills. Okay, so first let us look at an article. Okay, uh, so we are going to look at an article in extended writing. So uh, this article, the title here is a special place. Uh, so you are need you need to rec uh, you are required to answer three questions here. Okay, uh, an article wanted on a special place. State the location of this place. Mention the attractions that are worth visiting. State why this place is special to you. We will publish the be best article in the magazine. Now, uh, if you see, uh, you cannot respond to this task like how we respond in part two. Okay, part two, the task is only about 120 to 150 words. Here, you need to add details. We need to add more details. For example, the first part when you say state the location of this place, you need to decide the place that you want to write about. Mention the name of the place and the state, and you can give an extra detail if that place is particularly known for something very special or very unique. You can state that, okay, to uh, to to uh, to give more uh, uh, what uh, what we call that is a more information about that particular place, and then mention the attractions that are worth visiting. That second bullet. So if you see here, this may be places of historical value, a theme park or buildings, okay? Uh, like for example, we have Disneyland, right? And we all know where Disneyland is located. That is a landmark, okay? So landmark building or landmark historical place that you can you know about that place. And state why this place is special to you. So here you have to, it says why. So when it says why, you need to give a reason. And your reason might be an emotional connection to the place. It could be a place that you were raised, uh, you were born and raised, okay, because it's a special place. So these are the three things that you need to include. Now let us just look at one paragraph related to this article. Okay, so uh, uh, Hanif, would you like yes. to read? Sure, Mr. Wahana. Yeah. Um, right. Mention the attractions that are worth visiting and elaboration here. Kuala Kansai is known for manufacturing some unique pottery. Master craftsmen like my grandfather make the handmade pumpkin-shaped water vessel known as Labu Sayong. 
the pottery workshops are well worth a visit. Visitors can observe demonstrations and try their hand at pottery skills. The vessels are easy on the pocketbook and make good souvenirs. All right, thank you, Hanif. Okay, so if you see here, this is one place that we, uh, I have, uh, we have put here in elabor uh, elaboration, okay, uh, particularly about a place uh, known as Kolakangsa. Okay, we have given details here. We have given details, okay, about uh, the unique pottery here, manufacturing unique pottery, and additional information have been added, okay. Uh, now, the, here, uh, the author has said, like my grandfather, so it's trying to bring back the old times here, trying to bring, uh, being nostalgic here. So, and made, okay, and if you see another thing that uh, in this particular paragraph here is very uh, dis, uh, vivid description, okay, very vivid description. For example, handmade pumpkin-shaped water vessel, okay, known as Labu Sayong, okay, uh, and the use of idiom, for example, easy on the pocketbook. Okay, so now uh, these are some uh, simple vocabulary that I have used here, and at the same time, uh, explaining why the place is worth uh, visiting. Okay, and the attraction that you can find, and you when you say attraction, okay, you need to give detail of what is so attractive about the place. Uh, and attract uh, a place when you say what uh, attraction, meaning to say something that uh, it's drawn to you. Okay, you are drawn to that place. So what? Uh, how are you going to get people to uh, to visit this place in your article? So that is why you need to give a very uh, detailed description here. Now let us look at the next task. Okay, so that is uh, before I go to the next task. Sorry. So this is basically on article. Yeah. So if you see, I have explained on article how to go about this article. Now how many paragraphs? can we write when you're writing an article? You can write about four to five paragraphs as well, as long as you have answered all these questions here. But you need to give more details, okay? You need to give extra details here. Now, uh, the next task that I'm going to uh, explain here is writing a narrative, okay, or story writing. So the task here, uh, if you see, uh, your teacher has asked you to write a story for a short story competition. The story must have the title, A Friend in Need is a Friend Indeed. Okay, and your story should include a description of a friend, how the friend had helped you, okay, and write your story. Now, when you're writing a story, now first, uh, here are some key points that you need to keep in mind, okay, if you see here. First, when you're writing a narrative, you have to introduce the main character and the setting of the story, okay? Then, you need to come up with a conflict or in the story. And based on the conflict, you build up the events in the story. And you need to have the most exciting point of the story and the challenges faced by the characters and how it affected the characters. Okay, and how the problem was solved in the end. So these are some of the key ideas that you need to remember when you're writing a narrative. Now, next thing is, you look at the question, a description of a friend. So there are two things that you need to give, a description of a friend, okay, and secondly, how the friend had helped you. And if you see here, had helped you, okay, and it is you, you please, Keep in mind, okay, the, uh, the pronoun here is you. Okay, so again, you are uh, here in this task, you are required to write an essay on your personal experience. Okay, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Okay, a description of a friend. Now, how do we write a description of a friend? Uh, a description of a friend, it can be throughout the essay or it can be in some parts of the essays. Okay, it can be uh, like in, in one paragraph you want to describe your friend, you can do like that. Or Throughout the situation, you can put the descriptive details of your friend. For example, as helpful as Ami was, he quickly came running to my rescue. Okay, here you have added a, a, a description of your friend, how helpful he is. Okay, so these are the some descriptions that you have to keep in mind when you are writing. Any question, Hanif? Well, I find it very interesting, Mr. Moana, but I'm wondering though, because this is writing a story. A story has to be very creative, I believe, right? Yes. What tips do you have for our pupils at home to make sure that we're excellent in writing this story or scoring in the okay. story? Uh, a lot of pupils, um, they, they love to write stories. Even my students, they like to write stories. So before I give tips on writing stories, Okay, uh, okay, so here are the tips, okay, not before, okay, let's uh, look at the tips here. Okay, first, uh, the first tip is you have to think of a story to fit the given title. 
okay uh, then make your story interesting and another important thing is you need to have coherence in your story meaning to say your ideas need to be logical okay and it needs to uh, for example in this stuff here it is about uh, how the friend had helped you so meaning to say right from the beginning until the end it needs to lead to the idea that the friend had helped you it's not that in one paragraph suddenly something happened and suddenly your friend came and suddenly your friend helped you it's all in one paragraph whereas all the, the rest of the narrative or story it is not leading to anything that you need your friend to help you so this is what pupils need to keep in mind so right from the beginning there needs to be a conflict that is developed and your friend should be there as well and at the uh, and that one part the the idea of your friend helping you should be there so the conflict need to be built right from the beginning so that is what i said uh, like make uh, for example making your uh, plan and organize your points logically okay so here you need to have a uh, constant organization and logical points okay and mind the time allocated and word limit as i said for this task you have 200 200 to 250 words okay within the 200 to 250 words you have to write your story now um how lengthy students can write like my students i would say okay go about 270 or 280 how much you can manage within the time given that is very important and another thing is use of descriptive language and direct speech effectively so here uh, i'm going to show you an example of a paragraph where how uh, the descriptive language and direct speech is used effectively and i'm going to ask hanif to read for me this paragraph sure okay. mr mohana it's not a paragraph actually it's a complete essay it's a complete essay. no 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 here. oh no it's just a paragraph uh, one part of the essay sorry yeah right part of it okay i'm gonna start reading the phone rang keeping time with my tutting heart jack I need to do my chemistry homework, was cut off. Kenneth, help! You have to come here right now, I gasped breathlessly. Kenneth told me he was on his way. I waited for him anxiously outside the gate. Bruno's gone, I shouted, even before he got off his bicycle. Kenneth understood immediately. Bruno was my father's dog, pride and joy. I did not like dogs though. I had not wanted to look after Bruno while my parents were away for a business trip. I knew that if Bruno got lost when I was supposed to be looking after him, there would be an unpleasant scene where I could be blamed for being irresponsible even if Bruno went on his own. All right, oh. thank you. I thank could, you, Hanif. Well the, done. <laughs> I could yes. feel the energy, the anxiety in this paragraph. <laughs> okay, all right. Well done, Hanif. Okay, so if you see here, uh, I have highlighted a few words here. I have under bold and underlined a few phrases here. For example, keeping time with my tudding heart. Okay, cut off. Okay, a phrasal verb. Okay, gasp breathlessly. So, so you have gasp breathlessly. Okay, so these are examples of vocabulary that you can use when you are writing your essay. And all this vocabulary I've taken from the textbook. Okay, and uh, pride and joy is what we call as pair words. Okay, pride and joy. Okay, unpleasant scene. Okay, adding. What you can do is you can add an, uh, a verb to a noun, you can add an adjective to a noun, you can add an adjective to a verb. Okay, adding, uh, playing with these words would make, thing, um, uh, would make your essay more interesting. So this is how you can actually write narrative. And another way you can get all these ideas uh, flowing for narrative is read a lot of narrative. As I say, I also tell this to my students, you need to con uh, continue to read a lot of narrative to get ideas, as well as to learn uh, new things like this in, from those essays so that you can use it when you write on your own essays. Yeah. Right. I, and I love, and again, I have to say, I love this paragraph. There's a lot of drama in it. Even from the first sentence, Jack, I need to do my chemistry homework was cut off. And we're like left hanging there. <laughs> what is going on? Right. So, Mr. Mohana, I think we have learned quite a lot today. And yeah. if we could get a summary of what we have learned together for English Paper 2, which is writing. Okay, well, honey, for today's session, what we have looked at is uh, SPM English Paper 2. Okay, so first, uh, we looked at part one, short communicative message. And then part two, we looked at guided writing. And part three, we look at extended writing. So although extended writing, there are four formats. In today's session, we looked at article and story briefly on how to go about these two formats. 
Right, I think Mr. Mana, that was a good summary and I definitely learned a lot and I'm quite sure my friends at home have also gained a lot of knowledge. We have already taken down all the steps that Mr. Mohana has shared with us because all of us want to be an, all of us want to be excellent students in SPM and with that we have so much to thank Mr. Mohana for today's session. Thank you so much Mr. Mohana. It, it was extremely insightful I feel. And of course to our sign language interpreter teacher Aida with us. Thank you so much teacher Aida for being with us here today and to my friends at home continue to learn continue to study there's so much more that we can do so much more we can achieve stay tuned with us always on success SPM 2022 Pachutan on Didet TV KPM my name is Hanif Sean see you again